The sun powers all life on Earth. Its energy comes from intense nuclear fusion reactions going on at its core. We use that energy in many ways. Burning coal releases it from sunlight, trapped by plants millions of years ago. It's how most of the world gets its electricity, through power stations like this one. Coal is dirty, though, and we know that burning it damages the environment. But for half a century, scientists have had a dream. If they could mimic how the sun makes its own energy, if they could make a star on Earth, they'd create a cleaner, potentially unlimited source of power. Among the forests and vineyards of Provence, that dream is taking shape. This is Ita, the place where they want to try and reproduce the process going on at the center of every star in the universe. Right now, at the heart of our sun, hydrogen atoms at millions of degrees Celsius are being pushed together at unimaginable pressures. Sometimes, two atoms come together to make helium, and they release some energy. That's how the sun shines, and that's what scientists are trying to recreate in the facility being built below me. This circle traces the shape of what could become the world's first nuclear fusion power source. Creating a reactor big enough to provide power is one of the most ambitious scientific projects ever conceived. The whole site is the size of 60 football pitches. But it comes with one major caveat. No one knows if it will definitely work. Already, the budget, which started at 3 billion euros, has shot up to 13 billion. The final bill could be far higher. While the prospect of fusion energy powering our homes may be more than 50 years away. It's a gamble on a massive scale, but a gamble with potential. 35 countries are paying for it, including the UK, through the European Union. I'm about to meet the man who's been in charge for the past five years, Director General Osamu Motajima. What's been the most difficult thing in the time you've been running ITER? The major risk is the cost and the schedule. So to keep these risks within the understandable level, acceptable level, this is the most important point. To realize fusion energy that is contributing to the future uh, energy of humankind. Generations of scientists have believed in that goal. Steve Cowley is one of them. He runs JET, a fusion reactor in Oxfordshire that's the predecessor to ITER. At JET, they showed they could fuse atoms, but they put in more energy to make the fusion happen than they got back out, which is no good if you want a source of power. It's ITER's job to try and solve that problem. This is a step up from the experiment we have in the UK, JET, and this one is the one that's actually going to do fusion. Right? It's going to, it's going to show the world that all these years we've been waiting for fusion to happen, it really can happen on Earth. If this thing works, we're standing right next to what could be the source of uh, energy for the next several centuries. You know, we don't know where we're going to get our energy from in the second half of this century. And if we don't get fusion working, we're going to be really stuck. We have to make this thing work. To prove it does work is going to be an epic challenge. Scientists have wanted to recreate a star in a box on Earth since the 1950s. And at the heart of ITA is something called the tokamak. This is a ring-shaped container in which they'll boil up the hydrogen gas to millions of degrees Celsius. And they're going to build that right here. Inside the tokamak, that gas will become a plasma. That will be kept in place by superconducting magnets that only work when they're kept extremely cold. So the whole fusion reactor will be put inside a giant fridge that will keep those magnets as cold as space. When the building's finished, it'll be 70 meters high, which is almost as high as those cranes. Fusion power is not entirely without waste. It still has radioactive byproducts, but they stay radioactive for far shorter amounts of time than the waste produced by our current nuclear power plants. 
To get something like this working requires a complex machine in which every bit of technology tests the limits of engineering. There are parts being built in facilities all over the world. One of the closest is 60 miles south of ITER. This is uh, the sixth radial plate we have done, so we have 35 to do. This factory in Toulon has been purpose-built to make the giant steel plates that will hold the superconducting magnets together. We are doing a very big machine. Yeah, uh, this machine starts with a 24-tonne ring of steel and takes many months to carefully carve out grooves into a precise shape. And what is this material? Is it for some sort of special steel? Uh, exactly. This is special stainless steel, only manufactured for radial plate or component inside it. This is just one of the pieces of the ITER puzzle. There are over a million more being made. Superconducting cables from China. The world's largest high-pressure vacuum chamber from India. And tiny diamond plates for detecting particles from Russia. The whole project hinges on whether these parts fit together successfully. It's an international collaboration on an unprecedented scale. Back at ITER, the canteen buzzes with different languages. Over lunch, I met an Irish scientist starting her sixth year with the project. When I came here, we were actually in prefab buildings over on another site. Okay? And the whole idea of ITER was still sort of a dream because you can see something really happening. You can go to a site now where the buildings are up, we're pushing in the water cooling, the first components are actually arriving. So it feels real, you know, you walk in there and you actually feel, I am part of this, I am making this happen. Do you think this is going to work? Of course it is. Yeah, definitely. You're confident 100%? Yes, yes, I wouldn't be here otherwise. Not everyone shares that optimism. The project has had serious criticism over its long lifetime and is now far behind schedule. It also faces opposition from those against nuclear power, while some environmentalists would prefer to see the 13 billion euro invested elsewhere. But for those working in fusion, their passion doesn't falter. It's such an incredible thing that I think people have always sort of doubted that it would ever be possible, right? And we're this close now, I can taste how close we are. Somebody once said, how could you put the sun in a bottle? Right? We've begun to do that. And with this experiment, we will have a sun in a bottle. And you know, when this machine works, uh, I'll be here. I, you know, end of my career is gonna be watching this machine uh, do a fusion burn, and uh, that will be a historic moment. For scientists, unlimited fusion power has always been just beyond the horizon. With ITER, they have a chance to bring it within reach. If it works, every one of us will reap the benefits.